Welcome and thanks for clicking on our video. This detailed strategy is on the Elk River in British Columbia. You can see this is a stretch that we fished uh, from, from this point in the river up is where we started. Uh, there's riprap along the edge and, and we'll show that here in a little bit with some of the fish we caught. Then also uh, you can see this stretch downstream, just a beautiful valley. Uh, the elk uh, braids here on both sides. And uh, after we fished this stretch in front of us, we moved down and uh, there's a, just a beautiful little hole right in here that we hit um, and, and had some great luck with. So the Elk River in British Columbia, detailed strategies on how we caught fish on this day of fishing in BC. It was mid-morning and Steve was negotiating some rugged riprap. Right, this is the first part of the river that we started fishing and uh, not really, I would say, a likely looking spot from, from what I'm used to fishing cutthroats. Big river, right? Elk River's really big and right here it's it's big and burly. Uh, riprap along the edge just was not easy to walk along, but you know, we just came in, we started fishing to see what would happen. Um, you can see right in about there, this line in the river, um, heavy water over here, uh, fast. And, um, you know, just really didn't expect to get anything in there, and I'm not sure that we actually did. Um, here, though, there's a little bit of a back eddy. This, this comes back around in here. If it's not a back eddy, it's at least stag fairly stagnant. Uh, but I do believe there, there's a little bit of back current coming along here. So, you know, I just started fishing this with a hopper pattern. Um, this is a, an August day, uh, fairly cloudy, smoky, um, warm August day and breezy. You can see the ripple on the water here from the wind. So we're thinking hopper, even though it's fairly um, early in the day, probably 10, 11 a.m., something like that, maybe even earlier. And, uh, but put a hopper out there. So I, uh, tried some just in the flat water, and I tried some along the seam, right on along the edge, which is kind of where I expected and hoped to find some fish. Nothing would would take on just the regular presentation, the you know uh, dead drift down that seam. I was surprised when I was just kind of dragging the fly as I moved a little bit, um, and a fish hit. So. The first couple of fish we caught with the hopper pattern, uh, just dragging the hopper out in this area on the edge of the current, the seam from fast water uh, to slow water. Oh, oh there's a flash. Yo! Uh, how did that happen? <laughs> it was just kind of dragging in the seam out there. And it came up. It's a little guy. <laughs> Not paying attention. <laughs> it's always the key to great fishing. Yep. Don't pay attention. Another little cutthroat. It's another nice little cutty on the hopper. I wasn't paying attention, just kind of dragging it through the seam. Here's a picture of the area of the second fish that I caught along this rip wrap. The first fish was up above here. I switched from the hopper, caught a couple fish up above in that area I showed before, uh, but they really didn't seem to be going after it, probably a little too early in the day even though it was August and it was blowing. Switch to a uh, little purple haze pattern, size 16 purple haze. Just had been told that it worked here, but was still really surprised to see fish come up. Um, this, uh, the heavy current is still up there, but really this whole stretch along here is fairly deep. Uh, I would guess maybe five or six feet deep. It is, a, you know, a, a decent current for cutthroats, I would say, uh, but I, I still was not expecting fish to come up this far for a small dry fly. It kind of reminded me of the Yellowstone River salmon fly fishing, uh, but those are a lot bigger bugs. Uh, these fish were coming up to some pretty small uh, dry flies. 
And, and really we would, um, we saw them start to rise out in this area and started casting to them and, and sure enough, um, hooked up with a dry fly. So I would say this is not just like, for me anyway, classic cutthroat water. I would recognize it right away and say, hey, there's fish in here. But we, we had heard the elk was good. Uh, we had given it a try. We were in this area. We saw a couple fish rise, threw out a likely fly that uh, might get them to come up. And sure enough, they did. And we caught a few fish uh, in this area. So um, I think the key to this water is uh, there's probably a lot of food in here, no doubt. There's good cover, good boulders. Um, and the current, although fairly deep, um, is not overwhelmingly fast. I think it's it's at a decent pace uh, for cutthroats to be in, and, and they were in this water. Oh, see that? I missed it. They got him? Yeah. It's a good one? Yeah, it's a huge fish. Wow. I think. I'm going <laughs> to try and chase as soon as I can get on this thing. Wow. It almost looked like a brown trout. Oh it? boy, it's big. Yeah. Oh, it's a oh, nice it's trout. Oh, it's huge, Steve. Yeah, it's a big fish. It's under that rock. Oh boy. Ooh, man. It's a monster trout. trying to rub it off on the rocks. I'm gonna, I don't know if I can get down there or not. Oh boy. Okay, it's right here. Sounds bad. Steve had the big cutthroat near. Nice. Wow. He's not as big as I thought. I just thought he was going to be a 20 inch cut. He's a good. Beautiful fish, fat, though. Fat. Oh, yeah. Fat, beautiful fish. Probably 15, but fat. Wow. Gorgeous yeah. fish. Yeah. Couple pound cutthroat. Okay. It's a gorgeous trout. Look at that thing. <laughs> Sorry for the goofy look here. I, uh, chose this shot because I wanted to show kind of the extent of the riprap and how far we worked our way down this stretch. The original place where I started was right up in here. Uh, you can see that heavy current that I was pointing to earlier. And um, again, we worked our way all the way down this riprap, caught a few fish in, in a few different areas, you know, sometimes close, sometimes a little further out, especially as the water down here um, slowed a little bit. It's still kind of a a steady moving walking speed current again which i think was okay at least for these feeding cutthroats but i i do think the cutthroats are in here quite a bit um, and then um, we'll see down below this um, it starts to slow a little more deepens a little more and i think there's a few more fish down in this area as well but just wanted to show this big uh, section of riprap we're getting down river far enough now. We're almost to the end of the riprap. Ladden is standing on the last rocks that show, and then I'm down below uh, where it's mostly a mud bank. And the last fish in the last section we showed was, was up above this. And like I said, this, this area slowed, seemed like a little bit more. Um, still pretty deep. Uh, you can see the rock right here down a little bit, and it's even deeper out there. I would say the highest concentration of fish that we caught um, in this riprap area and um, the most rises we saw, the most fish coming up, was out in this circled red area. There was there were several fish uh, rising. I don't know the exact spots here, but out in here we would continue to cast to them. We'd see them rise. And oftentimes we could get a fly, you know, to them and uh, they would come up again. 
and uh, take our fly after we saw him rise, but a lot of times we were just casting out here too to a fish that we hadn't seen rise and, and it would come up and take our fly. So this was a really good area. I think the key to this area was that um, the, the flow slowed and deepened a little bit. It's sort of a tail out, you know, we're going into uh, a faster riffle here and a braid, so sort of a tail out. Um, but um, in this area right here, it slowed a little bit and deepened a little bit, and I think that was why it was a better holding spot for the cutthroats. Lighting fish on, big fish, cave coming. Steve was into another large cutthroat. It's right down here. He's trying to get under those logs. Now, how am I going to get this thing, do you think? He's trying hard to get under that log. Yeah. If you can get okay. him around that log, you can do it. Steve worked his way down the steep bank. Oh, snack. Boy, that is a something of a trout. Come on. Wow. That's huge. It is. Ah! <laughs> wow. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. What a fish. Wow. That is a nice cutthroat yeah. trout. Holy smokes, it's been a while since I've caught a fish like that. Yeah, Cutthroat like that. Wow. After we fished here for quite a while, uh, we moved our way down, walked down river, and um, as I said before, um, there's a really nice area right in here that we hit, and that's where the next uh, scene that we show uh, catching fish will be. This is that hole I was talking about, and, it, and it's really not much of a hole. It's more of, you know, a, a riffle. Got some nice uh, riffle water coming in here. Um, you've got some good cover under this log and under this log. And then um, in here, um, it slows, but it's not very deep. It's, you know, gosh, maybe, maybe two feet deep, something like that. And uh, you just wouldn't even know uh, that this was the Big Elk River. You know, I showed from the last clip, uh, this is where we came down and looking at it from a distance, you know, that's part of the adventure, right? As you work your way down or up a river um, is sometimes you can tell, hey, that's a good hole. Other times you're surprised. And this was definitely a surprise for us. Um, you know, looked okay. Uh, looked like a good option as we worked our way, walked our way down. But we're really surprised by what we found here. And uh, right, you can see the splash. This is where the take is. Um, the, the fish were in this area. Oops, sorry, it went too far over. They were actually in kind of the slower water and shallow water. And uh, one of the things that I think made this uh, such a, a good opportunity for us is, so just before this, as we walked down, we got into a thunderstorm. And so we ducked under a tree for a while. It wasn't a lot of lightning around, but a lot of rain and distant thunder and stuff. Um, so we sat and ate and, and uh, just waited it out. When we came back out, you can see it's still fairly dark, uh, real low light conditions, even though this is still probably five o'clock in the afternoon in August, so lots of daylight left. I think those low light conditions allowed these fish to feel comfortable out in this water. Uh, another thing that was interesting about this August that we went, uh, the, the river, maybe it's always like this, but the river seemed a little bit high and it had some color to it. So I think the combination of those two things um, allowed fish to be in, you know, really kind of flat, calm water, not a lot of riffle to it to have protection um, and shallow water. And uh, we were really surprised how many fish we landed or hooked and had come up and saw just right in this um, little area. It was just a fantastic um, experience really right here in this spot. And again, 
Um, you know, big rivers like the Elk River, a little intimidating. It was certainly fun catching them along the riprap, but, but this kind of is uh, more intimate. It's just a braid of the elk, but just feels more like, you know, small stream cutthroat fishing. Uh, so really fun place. In the last clip, you saw where the splash was, but I wanted to show you this. It's pretty cool. Um, the fly is right there, and um, the fish is gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play the video here in just a little bit. And the fish is just gonna come up, and that fly is just gonna disappear. You just so weird. The fly just disappears, and there's no there's no evidence that a trout. Other than you can see the trout coming under the water, but it doesn't even hardly ripple. Uh, the water on the top and I think again here um, they didn't have to go very far the water was pretty slow the light conditions allowed them to be there comfortably and they could just you know come up nice and slow and uh, take these flies uh, without a lot of effort oh, oh yes. good heavens yes I got it wow what a fish what a fish another one out nice. of this little another teeny nice hole crowd. yeah good heavens This one's kind of ambitious. Yeah, it's a good fish. Oh yeah. What a mongo fish out of this little teeth. Oh my gosh, that's 16 inches. <laughs> I know. <laughs> out of this little hole, that's insane. <laughs> Unbelievable spots on that guy. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, out of a tiny hole. What a gorgeous fish. Look at this guy. Look at him, look at him. This is the fly that we used for the rest of the afternoon. The first couple of fish again were caught with a hopper and then we switched over uh, to this uh, purple haze pattern basically about a size 16 and um, some variety of that fly size or maybe a little different hackle is what we used throughout the rest of the day and that was effective. Uh, there really was no need to switch and we did start seeing um, a hatch early on up by the riprap uh, we didn't see a lot of bugs coming off, but just tried this and it started working. When we moved down, we, there were some bugs coming off. We could see them. I don't know exactly what they were, if they were blue-winged or some other type of uh, mayfly. Regardless, we didn't have to figure it out. They kept coming up to this fly and it was just effective throughout the rest of the afternoon. I don't know if this pattern works a lot up in BC, Elk River, or what it may be, but this day and, and a few other days that we've had up in this region around Fernie, it has been a very effective fly. This is the same spot. I just wanted to show where another fish took the fly. You can see it's right here. Um, and again, kind of in the, you know, flat water off of the edge of the main current, very shallow water. Again, maybe, maybe a foot and a half. See that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that is a big fish, too. This big cut was fighting strong in the small pool. That was so sweet. Oh my gosh, these fish are incredible here. He just slurped that baby. Yeah, that's a nice trout. Sure is. Uh, nice. Small water, unbelievable. Small little hole, and I just really wasn't expecting anything like that. Mm. How come you caught the big one? I don't I know. Small one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> Man, that is a really nice cutthroat trout. Yeah, really nice. On this day of fishing, we used our standard nine foot five weight fly rods, dry flies the whole day. We used uh, a Moorish hopper with a yellow underbody on the first couple fish and then switched to the um, size 16 purple haze, uh, parachute purple haze, and um, that's what we used the rest of the day. Um, you know, the, the leader wasn't anything. It, had to be anything special here you just a nine foot um, 3x leader i want to thank you for watching this video i will be putting out uh, one of our adventure series videos probably in the next couple of weeks 
to follow up with this episode on the Elk River and that adventure series is where I go into details and show a little bit of the river map, a uh, little bit of where we fished, uh, how we found out about it, uh, maybe fly shops, accommodations, guides, uh, permit, all that kind of stuff, details about actual travel and, and how to make this um, a fishing trip for you. So. Uh, keep an eye out for the adventure series coming out in uh, within a couple of weeks. And again, thanks for watching. Have fun catching and releasing fish.